What is going on everyone? My name is Kodamore and welcome back to the New Beginner Java Game Program Tutorial Series. Today we are going to be working a little bit about entities because right now if we run our game all we have is a player and a couple of blocks. We want some actual stuff that'll make up the world like trees and maybe other enemies and stuff but we need a proper way to manage all of that and that's what we're going to be working on today. I'll explain it all as we go on. First things first, really, really quickly, I'm going to right click on my entities package and I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call this class static entity and I'm going to put it in the dot statics, dot entities, dot statics class. I'm going to do that. Now a static basically means something that doesn't really change. So a static entity in our case is going to be an entity that doesn't move around, like a tree or a rock. So a tree or a rock would be called a static entity. And this class is going to be an abstract class, and of course it will also extend our entity class, so it is an actual entity. So we're going to have to create a constructor here, static entity, and we're just going to take in our handler handler. Uh, we'll take in a float x, a float y, an int width, and an int height, like so. And we're just going to call the super constructor of our entity class that we are extending with handler x, y, width, and height, like so. Go ahead and import everything, and like that, and that should be it. So basically, this static entity is kind of like the creature class. Creature class is for all creatures that move. Static entity is for things that don't move, like trees and rocks. Now we're going to add some special functionality into this static entity class, but for right now, it's basically just going to provide us with a constructor, and it's just going to act like a regular entity class. But I just wanted to have this uh, class for the future. Next, I'm going to right-click on my static entities uh, package, and I'm going to create a new class. I'm just going to call this tree. And of course, tree is going to extend our static entity, like so. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to hover over tree here, and we're going to add a constructor like that. We are just going to take in our handler x and y in our constructor, and we're going to pass in width and height, whatever width and height your tree is or whatever object you're creating. In my case, my tree is the width of a tile and the height of a tile times 2. And then, of course, we're also going to have to implement all of our unimplemented methods, which is our tick and render method, like so. So for right now in our render method, I'm just going to do g.drawImage, and I'm just going to draw the tree image from my assets class, so assets dot tree apparently I can't type very well and render it at our XY position for width and for height and then null as the last parameter and remember whenever we're working with entities we first have to cast the X and Y into an integer and to get it to render in the proper spot we're also gonna have to do something else exactly like we did it with the uh, player class because if we take a look at our player class when we render the player we render it at X minus handler dot get game camera dot get x offset so we're also going to need to do that to our tree so it's going to be x minus handler dot get game camera dot get x offset and we're going to do the same exact thing for our y everything minus get y offset all right i know i went really fast over all of this but it's because i figure that you guys should hopefully be able to understand this Static entity is basically kind of like our creature class up here, and a tree is kind of like our player. The tree is extending static entity, and we're basically just rendering it to the screen at the proper position, and just passing it in x, y, and width and height for our constructor. Again, I really didn't do much. This is just adding an entity to our game. I hope you guys understood that. Any questions, let me know. Now, in our game state, we, are, we have our player object, and we're ticking and rendering the player. So, if we want to create a tree, obviously we just create, you know, a private tree object called tree. Maybe we initialize it down here, tree equals a new tree, handler, and, I don't know, 100, 200 for a position. Then maybe we'll tick it down here, tree dot tick, and then down here we will render it. So we'll do tree dot render, g like so. So if we go ahead and run our game, we should now, well, if we import everything, import our tree like that. If we run our game, look at that, we have my wonderful tree right there on the screen. Now this is absolutely terrible, because we want way more than one tree, and way more objects in our game. We want rocks, trees, other entities, and doing it this way is terrible. 
hard coding in trees and stuff like that, that is very, very bad. So this is what this tutorial is all about. Here's where I'm going to slow down a little bit. We are going to work on a class that will manage every single entity in our game. It'll tick all of the entities in our game, it'll render all of the entities, and it'll basically just manage all of them perfectly for us. So let's get to work on that class. I'm going to delete my tree here in this class, and I'm actually even going to delete my player. I don't even need my player in the game state anymore. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do in the game state now is tick our world and render our world. That's all we're going to have to do in the game state. Now a lot of the work is going to be in this world class and in a new class that we're going to create. So go ahead and right click on your entities package, go to new class, not new package, go to new class and create a class called entity manager. This is going to be the class that manages all of the entities in our game, public entity manager like that. Now an entity manager is going to have a few things. It, first of all, it's going to have a private handler handler to have our handler class. It's going to have a private player player. It will store our, our player object. And then we need some way, go ahead and import all that. We need some way to hold every other entity in our game, every tree in our game, every rock in our game, every other enemy or creature in our game. So we could do that by an array, but we're going to do it even better. We are going to do that by having a private array list of entities called entities. I'll explain this in a minute in case you haven't seen it. Down here in our entity manager, we're just going to take in our handler handler and a player player as parameter. And we're just going to go ahead and set those this.handler equals handler, this.player equals player like so, and then entities is going to equal a new array list of entity, like so. Now in case you haven't seen array list before, an array list is basically like an array, so an array list of entities, that's what the brackets mean. It's what the array is going to hold, in our case it's going to hold a bunch of stuff that extends to the entity class. And this is basically like having an entity array just like this, except it doesn't have a size. If we did a normal array like this, you'd have to specify a size like 20, 20 entities. But an array list allows us to add and remove as many entities as we'd like whenever we want to. So we can have one entity in our game, we can have 20 entities in our game, we can have 120 entities in our game, and we can remove them and add them whenever we want to. We never have to resize an array or do anything fancy like that. So that is how an array list works. I'm not going to go into too much detail with it. Of course, our entity manager is also going to need a public void tick method to tick all the entities. And it's also going to need a public void render method taking in a graphics G to render all of the entities in our game. And before I forget, I'm just going to go ahead and generate a few getters and setters for entities handler and player just so that we have them, so our getters and setters. All right, so here's the base class. Now let's actually implement some of the code in it. We're gonna need one more method down here. It's going to be a public void add entity, and it's gonna take in an entity called E as a parameter. What this will do is it's going to take an entity, whatever we pass into it, and it's going to add it to the entity's array list up here. That way it can be ticked and rendered. And it's as simple as doing entities.add E. That's as simple as it is to add an entity to an array list. Okay, now let's go ahead and tick everything. So we're just going to create a for loop for int i equals zero, i is less than entities, oop, entities dot size, so the size of the entity's array list, kind of like an array dot length, and then we're just going to do i plus plus, general for loop, just like we're iterating through a regular array, and we're going to create an entity object called e, and we're going to set that equal to entities, dot get and we're going to pass an i. So what this is basically doing is it's saying entity e equals entities at i. That's basically what it is just when we're using an array list we use the dot get method. That's all that is doing. So now we have an entity called e. For right now all we're going to do is e dot tick. We're going to change that in a few tutorials from now but e dot tick is all we're going to need for right now. And then we can't forget after the for loop to tick our player as well. We're keeping our player separate from every other entity in the game because the player is really special and it's going to have a few funky things that doesn't exactly go along with every other entity in our game. All right, now we have to render everything. What I'm going to do is you could do the same thing you did up here. You could literally copy this for loop, paste it in here, and just do e.render. 
and pass in G, except I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm, I'm going to delete that line of code right there, and I'm going to do for entity E in entities. If you haven't seen that before, it works the exact same way as this for loop up here, except it kind of handles the for loop part where we do i equals zero and we i plus plus, and it also creates an entity called E and just automatically gets it from the array list for us. So it creates an entity called E and it does it for every single entity in the entity's array list. Now the reason why I'm doing this down here and not up here is because if we did this method right here, over here in the tick method, we're going to run into problems when we begin redoing collision stuff again. And that's going to be very bad. So make sure you use the regular for loop int i equals zero stuff in the tick method, and then you can use either that or this fancy version in the render method. It doesn't really matter in the render method. That's basically our entity manager for right now. Head on into our world and let's do that. So we're going to do our entities here. We're just going to put a comment here. And we're going to do private entity manager, entity manager, like that. Now before we load our world, this is very important, before we load the world, we're going to say entity manager equals a new entity manager. We have to pass in our handler object, and as well as a player object. So we're just going to create a new player with handler, and I'll just plop him at 100, 100, just for a start. Then after we load the world, make sure it's after we load the world, we are finally, it's been ages since we've ever worked with our world class, but we are finally going to actually use the spawn x and spawn y variables up here. Remember, these are set inside of our world file, so if we go into world1.txt, right now I'm saying the player should spawn at 100, 100, so let's actually make that happen. So after we load the world, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do entity manager, Get player dot set x. We're going to set the x position of our player to the spawn x variable that we've also set up here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and set the y position of our player to spawn y. So now the spawn positions for our player in our world files will actually work. That was just something I felt that we haven't added in a while and we should probably add it right now. Next, we have to do our entity manager dot tick. We have to tick all the entities. And then finally, after we render all the tiles, we have to render all of the entities. So energy manager dot render and pass in G as a parameter. That should be it. If we go ahead and run our game now, we get nothing on the screen. And that is because in our entity manager, I forgot that we had to do player dot render G down here in the render method after the for loop. I completely forgot about that. So once we render the player, now we're able to have our game again. Now, say we want to add a tree. So just for temporary code, here in my world class, I'm just going to do entity manager dot add entity, and I'm just going to create a new tree entity. Pass in handler, and I'll just throw it at 100 comma 250. Import your tree class, and now if we run our game, we instantly get a tree right there. Now you'll notice how it looks really bad. First of all, there's no collision detection. We're going to have to fix that later. And second of all, this looks fine, like going up into it like that, but this looks terrible. We should be behind the tree right now. That's another thing that we have to fix with rendering in a few videos from now. But in general, our entity manager is working. So say we wanted to add a bunch of trees. I'm just going to copy this line. We can just add a bunch of trees. I'll space them out 100 pixels apart, like that. And if we run our game, you should be able to notice that we have three trees loaded into our game, ticking and rendering, all that fancy stuff. And it was very simple. That's all for this tutorial, everyone. If you had any questions whatsoever, I know I went a bit fast in some parts of this tutorial. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.